This is Financially Fit Radio with Corey Sickles from Safe Harbor Retirement Group. When a part of your financial strategy is out of tune, your long-term goals, your retirement savings, and your legacy can all suffer. With many years of experience in the financial industry, Corey provides his clients and prospects with the information they need regarding Social Security, retirement income planning, wealth management, and much more. Listen in as we address your financial concerns and provide helpful solutions to put you on the path to achieving your retirement goals. And now, here is Financially Fit Radio with Corey Sickles. Welcome back to another episode of Financially Fit Radio. I'm Corey Sickles with Safe Harbor Retirement Group and Wealth Advisors. If you'd like any information about today's show or any other financial topic, uh, just feel free to give us a call at 614-760-0670. And you can always visit us online at safeharboroh.com. And while you're visiting our website, feel free to check out our radio page. You can subscribe to our show as well as listen to past episodes. And when I say subscribe, you can also subscribe to our uh, show on popular uh, podcast platforms like Amazon Music, right? or I mean Apple Podcast, Amazon Music, Google Podcast, or Spotify. Also, feel free to watch our uh, Financially Fit Radio on YouTube. And you can also watch other financial topics. Just type in Safe Harbor Retirement Group as well. You know, we're here to help and provide, you know, financial assistance. Just remember all of our meetings are complimentary. There's no financial obligation. Our top priority is to make sure that you have a secure retirement. You know, today we're going to talk about, you know, some of the most popular financial trends here in 2024. I think it'll be an interesting topic, but before we kind of dive into that, Tony, how are you doing today? Tony, Shore. Oh, I'm doing great. Yeah, Corey, thanks for having me on the show once again and uh, had a great week. Uh, just really busy uh, doing a lot of uh, recordings and uh, keeping at it. A lot of stuff with my family, you know, getting ready for the holidays and yeah, doing good. How about you? What have you been up to? You know, it's been, you know, it's been uh, pretty busy here. It's hard to believe we have March Madness going on. Looks like I was, you know, before the show we were talking, you had about 14 inches of snow up there in Minnesota in March, late March. <laughs> I know. Um, I know. Kind of crazy. Um, it but, is. Uh, you know, it, it, you know, this is get ready to be the, some of the best time of the year. Once April rolls around, Masters kicks in. For yep. me, that means it's golf season's, you know, going to be coming full blown. So, you know, kind of looking forward to that as well. But, you know, just like anything else, it, it's, it's actually a pretty busy time of the year. Uh, you know, for us, I think we'll have a lot of, you know, client clients and prospects come in here over the next couple months before school ends and before they start doing, you know, summer vacations and things like that, or family vacations more than anything else. So, yeah, this is a this is a pretty time, pretty busy time of the year. We have a lot of people that are going to be retiring here as well. Um, it seems like once those bonuses are paid out from the previous year and things like that. People start looking around that April first uh, time frame in order in order to retire. Yeah, yeah, I know this is a busy time for you, and yeah, I'm up in Minnesota, and uh, we've avoided snow all year, but uh, it finally hit us. Uh, hopefully, it won't stick around long. But yeah, it, we got a lot. Uh, we got where I live, we have 14 inches uh, overnight. So yeah, yeah, 14 yeah. inches is a lot. Yep. It is. It is. And that's the most Minnesota's seen all winter. Normally we have uh, way more snow, uh, but March, we can get, March is actually typically the snowiest month in Minnesota, believe it or not, not the coldest, but we usually get the biggest snowfalls in March, which is su surprising because we had spring like weather about a week ago, Corey. <laughs> oh, and, yep. <laughs> you know, I was, I, oh, a couple of weeks ago, I, I guess I put my uh, snow blower away and you always kind of worry about it, but I do it too early. <laughs> we don't put our snow blowers away here in Minnesota <laughs> until May, <laughs> May 1st. That's yeah. when it goes away. Yeah. Well, Corey, um, this is a great topic. You know, the financial trends that are out there uh, this year and, and just over the last five years, we've seen retirement planning change. And this year it's happening more and more. Where do you want to begin with this topic? You know, I think one of the, you know, one of the big, Trends we started to see this last, you know, really in 2023. And from a stock performance standpoint, you know, um, artificial intelligence or AI kind of really took off. 
Um, you, you saw it a lot more in the news more than anything else. Yeah. But I, now I think what you're going to be able to see is now you're, you're getting to the point now where companies are going to start using this. And if you look from the financial standpoint, um, you know, I'm going to use uh, one one big one is going to be fraud, you know, like fraud detection. That's going to be a big one where they can actually use AI in order to help determine, you know, detect, you know, credit card companies, bank companies, any type of transactions you're doing. You're going to be able to see that be used from a from a fraud detection standpoint. And you're, I think you're already seeing it from an investment research standpoint as well. And, you know, for our viewers and listeners out there, I don't know if you've actually used uh, AI at all. You know, I, I'm, I'm a big component or big proponent of um, using uh, chat GPT. I, I, I've recently started to use, I, I recently started to try, uh, you know, Google's Gemini. Um, I, I'm not, I don't like that as well. And, you know, but for, for a lot of our users out there, you know, some of the things that you can use it for is, is really kind of amazing. You can oh, yeah. just ask it questions. Um, any question you want, you know, it's kind of like when when Google started, you know, what what do you actually, you know, how do you actually ask that search op option? I used to tell my my parents, I said, just type in exactly what you want, want it to come back and display to you. Yeah. And, and chat GPT is really the same way. Just ask it exactly what you want. It's going to go out and research based upon the web or whatever else you're actually asking. It's going to come back and provide results. It's yeah. a great way for for us, you know, Tony, you know, from a, a weekly show standpoint to say, hey, I need some top 10 topics maybe to to talk about, you know, some financial topics or financial trends or or whatever they are. Or yeah. I use it to come up with the show descriptions that we put up on yeah. the uh, website for each show. I go to uh, Bard is another one. It's Google's chat GTP, uh, yeah. GPT uh software. So I use Bard and I say, give me a three sentence description for a show episode, financial show episode with this title, navigating the financial future. Uh, and it'll give me a three sentence description and I'll read it over. Sometimes I have to make some changes, but it, it's pretty handy. It is, especially when, you know, not only for, for topics, if you're wanting to be, maybe you write an article or you write an email sure. or something like that. You can put it in there and say, hey, can you maybe make this better? Check grammar, whatever you want it to be able to do. And, but, but my point of it is, is I know we're going to be able to see more and more of this from the from the business standpoint of it. Yeah. But I still think there's a lot of good uses out there from from us, from a personal standpoint that we can actually use on a day to day basis. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's really, really great. Uh, you know, it, it really is helpful. And uh, I know there's big debates, uh, but I think if it's integrated in the right way for these practical uses, it's fantastic. Uh, and that is one thing that is changing how everybody does business, too. Oh, with, yeah, without a doubt, uh, uh, Tony. And I think you're going to see more and more of that yeah. just as, as it kind of progresses here. Yep. And becomes just like anything else adopted by more of the general public as well. Yeah. You know, <clears throat> When I did a little research today, I was actually using, I was kind of looking at some articles. And one of the ones I was looking at was a Forbes article. And one of the, the, the financial trends they actually talk about is sustainable investing. And really what we're talking about there is, you know, investing in things that um, are going to be more positive from an environmental standpoint, societal impact, you know, things like that. And that's kind of an interesting, uh, I think that's kind of an interesting trend you know, a few years ago, I think we had, I'll, I'll, here's the easiest way for me to, I guess, just kind of talk about this topic in general, Tony, is this. I have clients that come in and they're either one way or the other on this. They either want to, they either want to invest in, in sustainable investing or they don't want any part of it. They just want us to be able to invest based upon how we're going to make them the most amount of money. And, you know, I, you know, what the nice part about, I guess, what we do here is we're able to accommodate the way that you do want to invest. You know, if you want to invest in ERG and you want to, from a you know sustainable investing standpoint, we're able to fit those type of needs. Um, if you want us to be able to invest the best way and and not you know necessarily use that type of method, then we're able to do that as well. But you know, it, it's it's something that I think it you know obviously it's very political. But uh, we're able to accommodate either one. 
but but you know overall worldwide i think that's more on the rise i don't know if it's actually caught up maybe mainstream here in you know in the united states is quite like you know the other parts of the world yeah. Yeah. I think that's a, that's a really good point and, and you're right. And I, I see it happening more and more. I, I think that's really going to spread. Yeah, I, I do too. And you know, the, the, again, I just want to make sure of, you just want to be able to work with an advisor oh, that, can, yeah. that can do both of them, whatever yeah. you want to be able to do and whatever you want to be able to accommodate. You yeah. just want to make sure that you have portfolios that's going to meet your needs. Everyone's situation is different. Everyone's needs are different and the way you want to invest but just make sure you're working with an advisor that has that ability, you know, to meet whatever your demands are. Yeah. Yep. You know, another p- very popular one, and I think it really started to take off in 2020 during COVID. And that is just basically, you know, digital payments are really kind of starting to dominate now. Um, you know, f- four or five years ago, I didn't even know what Venmo was, you know, it was being more used by teenagers and things yeah. like that. Yeah. But, you know, now when I even go to the golf course and we do bets, you know, we're ma- we're trading money via Venmo. Yeah. So, so the cash is no longer, you know, we I no longer really have cash even when I go in and, and do, you know, go to go hit the golf course and do some side bets and things like that. And, uh, you know, from obviously a, a lot more people are using Venmo. Another popular one is Zelle out there. But I, but I, but I think that platform, those type of platforms are going to keep growing and growing, you know, as, as, as we kind of move on here, here in the future. Sure. Well, and yeah, and I don't ever carry cash anymore. Most people I know don't carry cash anymore at all. So, I mean, it's really gotten to the point where, you know, I mean, you can just tap your phone. I have all my cards on my phone, um, it's 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 crazy how much it's advanced just in the last few years sure like you say sure you know really the only time i carry cash anymore tony is when i travel just to make sure i have a little bit of pocket change in yeah. case i do need it yeah as as i buy stuff you know when i'm at the airport or wherever sure. else but uh you're right um we're going more and more digital you know from that standpoint you know yeah just like you're right i, I have my stuff on my iphone as well and uh, it's just a lot more, it's a lot easier and a lot more convenient in order to pay. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's huge. And, uh, that's a big trend. What's something else? Uh, what's another, uh, trend or strategy for 2024? You know, I think one of the, the biggest things that you're seeing more and more of, and that is you're seeing a lot, you're seeing a big rise in personal financial apps out there. And, uh, I think, you know, one of the things, of course, I think it's doing is being able to allow you to see, you know, how your portfolio is doing. It allows you also to key in, you know, allows you to put all of your financial information in there as well. But I think that's going to be a big trend. I think that's a, I think that's a very positive trend. The one thing I don't like about it, <laughs> I think, is sometimes there's nothing wrong with having having inf- financial information in there, Tony. The other difference is, is you don't want to be checking once an hour to see how your stock portfolio is doing. <laughs> yeah, you can get addicted to. Yeah, if, if you're constantly seeing where your money is at on a daily basis, that's not how the stock market works or investments work. And uh, that's that's not healthy because then you're going to let your emotions get involved. But uh, I know you help your clients with that so they don't have to worry about that. You have a tool like that, the Generational Vault. That's an online tool that's fantastic. It is. Uh, it, it, I, I, I use that. My wife uses it for our financial information and important documents, but also, you know, on the software and app side, as far as apps, like on our phones, it, it, we use um, for our budgeting software, you need a budget, it's called YNAB. And if you Google, it's one of the top rated, it's a great budgeting software. So if you're using it, not just for to watch your stocks and stuff, but f- budgeting software has come a long way. It's been around a while, but I'm telling you, it's really, I mean, our stuff from our checking account is automatically loaded in there. And then we categorize, we assign categories to each uh, thing that hits our account. Uh, and that way we see where we're spending money. And it's uh, really, it makes a world of difference for us. Yeah. yeah and, and here's the nice part I think about it as, as more of these financial apps are out there. You know, yes, you're able to see what you know what your investments are doing, but sure. I think it. But I think it allows the the users right to now to get some type of investment advice, do some research, maybe get some financial literacy, 
just in general, of just about finances, which is always a good thing. And if you use it the right way, where you're using it more, just like you said, for budgeting and things like everyday use, you're going to be you're, you're going to become better educated. And at the end of the day, it's going to allow you to ultimately have a better financial picture, which is going to make retirement a lot easier when that day does come. Yeah. Yeah. But there's no there's no substitute, though, for working with a financial professional. I mean, they've they've tried to come up with some they call them robo advisors, um, but they're not going to be able to look at your whole picture and sit down with you and talk about health care planning, uh, you know, for costs, retirement, income planning, um, so maximize your Social Security. Uh, they're not going to do all these things for you and get to know your personal situation because that's that's what you do is, you know, everybody's situation is different. So that's where you come in. And I think it's so important. You utilize tools like there's software that does 20,000 calculations that you have to do social security maximization to calculate all the potential based on a client's, you know, information and when they want to retire and what their full retirement age is and how much they have. So that's, that's huge, but you have to have somebody uh, that you can go to for all of these things that has a handle on your big picture and your personal situation, don't you? That's exactly right. I mean, I'm going to use a, a good analogy of this too, is, you know, I go to the doctor and I get a physical, right? Right. And this is, this is actually, this is real stuff I'm going to talk, talk about, but you know, if I have anything to work on, you know, the nice part is, is, now I have an online app with my doctor. That's the that's one part part of it. But the second part is is I need I need other apps that that's going to be able to store information. You know, uh, check my my blood pressure. You know, it, it can store my history now. Um, another obviously, I think another good one is fitness ones is too right. Yeah. Right. So so this is now with my Apple Watch, it's able to track my heartbeats, how yeah. much all that, all this type of stuff is all integrated in. And that's information that I can go back and show the doctor at the end of the day and saying, you know, here's what I'm doing. What do I need to, you know, what do I need, what do I really need to adjust in order to have a better health? I mean, it, it's it's kind of the same way. Um, so these apps are going to be be good. But at the end of the day, I, I you know, I personally want to work with somebody, wh whether it's from a fitness standpoint or whether it's from a doctor standpoint. And I think a lot of people still want to have that interaction from a financial standpoint. You know, we might have the tools that you can utilize when you're not with us. But at the end of the day, we're going to be able to help solidify that, you know, solid, you know, solid, put it together a solid plan for you yeah. to make sure that you're going to have the retirement that you want. You know, and the, here's the other part of, of it is, is just make sure you're also working with a fiduciary. My interest, we're only going to recommend things that are in your best interest. We're only going to do what's right for you. And that's what you want to look for, you know, in, in, you know, with an advisor as well. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's important. So what's something else uh, that we need to know about to navigate the financial future? You know, one of the, the things that I see more and more of, Tony, and that is just the way that people are looking at retirement. It used to be, you know, five or six years ago, it was a pretty hard solid. Well, you know what? I'm going to retire at 67 and then I'm done working. Now what, what I'm actually seeing is as we kind of have, you know, clients and prospects come in, they're wanting to maybe retire, but maybe semi-retire. You know, instead of working 40 hours a week, they're wanting to work 15 to 20 hours a week. Um, and I think there, there's a lot of good benefits to that. What, you know, from a from a standpoint of still being able to get out and do things from a health perspective, a mental perspective, I think it's that's a very good trend to be able to, you know, be able to think about. But, you know, you're also still being able to interact uh, with people on a day to day basis. And, you know, if you and if you still are semi retired, it's still gonna, it's still going to have you're going to have other time to do other things, whether you want to golf or play pickleball or or be able to, you know, go out and um you know, contribute to the community or whatever you want to be able to do. Um, but I think that's going to be more and more of a trend that you, we're, we're going to see more of. And it's just like anything else, you know, five or six years ago it was like 67 or 68. Now people are retiring, it's, you know, semi-retired at 62. And I, you know, I, and it might even be a few, you know, years earlier than that, um, you know, five or 10 years from now. Yeah. 
Yeah, I, I can see that happening. Uh, and I, I, I think that the gig economy and people that are living longer, they want to keep working a little bit in retirement. That's changing things. I, I see that happening more and more. Yeah. And, uh, you know, with, since we're talking about, you know, trends for 2024, I really don't think that you can, uh, you have to talk about cryptocurrency, right? Right. right now, right now it's right now it's uh, from a cryptocurrency standpoint, it's it's hot. It's going up. But I think one of the things you're going to see more of is more regulation around this type of stuff. I think you're going to see governments worldwide trying to be able to get in, get in some type of regulations. Um, you know, obviously, you know, you hear a lot about decentralized finance you know, where you're going to be able to pay different ways and things like that. That's in, in order to do a lot of this type of stuff, you do want it to be somewhat regulated because if you don't regulate some of this stuff, then you can get involved with, especially with decentralized finance. You, one of the things you can get, a, a, it could be become, I guess, a, a big issue could be fraud, scams and things like that as well. So you want to make sure that, uh, um, those that, that new decentralized finance trading platforms are going to have some type of regulation because right now it's at the very beginning stages and who knows what that's really going to look like, you know, three, five, 10 years from now. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, obviously things change rapidly and I think that's, that's a good point. Uh, what else uh, do we need to know, especially, you know, you talk about retirement, it really has changed uh, the way people plan for it. Yeah. Uh, and I think that's that's a big part of it. I think, you know, with all the tools and things that we have access to. Obviously, you know, people are thinking about different ways in order to retire. Right. I think it's going to allow them to be able to put together, you know, a little bit more, uh, you know, with all these apps and all these things that are taking place out there with all these tools, people are going to be able to plan, I think, a lot, a lot better than they have you know, five, 10, you know, 20 years ago. So I, so one of the things I, I would highly recommend is you work with an advisor, put together some plans. And then the nice part is, is you can use the tools out there to kind of keep up to date to make sure that you are on track to have the retirement that you want. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's the key right there. Uh, make sure you're on track to have the retirement you want. And, you know, people need to stay on top of this. But uh, what I do is, you know, I rely on you, the financial professional, to help me do these things and stay on top of it. And I know this is something you're doing for your clients. It is. I mean, some of the things that we talked about, you know, you might not want to take advantage of them, right, on a day-to-day -day basis. Sure. But, you know, being an advisor, we have to keep up to date and we're going to have to kind of change the way our business model works as well, the way we interface with clients too. We got to keep track of the trends. How's AI going to help us help you at the end of the day, right? So, right. You, know, you know, our job is really to, um, one of the big things that we try to do is educate our clients. It's so important to be able to constantly educate uh, to yeah. make sure you understand why we're recommending things, what new products are out there, what, what should you be taking advantage of? What are the new tax trends? Any, all those type of stuff at the end of the day, you know, we need to know that, but more importantly, we need to be able to make sure you understand why we're recommending stuff. And by the way, we're going to give you the tools to be educated on, on to help to make, to help make the best decisions just for you. Yeah. Well, let our listeners know before we have to go today, Corey, how they can get a hold of you and set up that complimentary, no cost, no obligation consultation. Yeah, for our listeners and viewers out there, you can always just give us a call at 614-760-0670 or feel free to visit our website at safeharboroh.com. Again, we're here to help and guide you to make sure that you have the best you know, retirement plan that you can put in place. So if you don't have a financial plan, give us a call. If you do have one, we'll be that second set of eyes to be able to provide a, you know, a second opinion as well. Again, um, I, I highly recommend if you don't have a financial plan today, you need to have one tomorrow. And we're here to help to make sure that you're going to have that. And remember, all of our meetings are complimentary. There's no financial obligation. Again, just give us a call at 614-760-0670 or visit us online at safeharboroh.com. All right. And that does it for today's episode of Financially Fit Radio. 
Thank you for listening to Financially Fit Radio. Don't pay too much for taxes or retire without a sound income plan. For more information, contact Corey Sickles at Safe Harbor Retirement Group. Call 614-760-0670 or visit their website at financiallyfitoh.com. All matters discussed during the show are for informational purposes only. Each individual situation may vary and the opinions expressed here may not apply to everyone. Materials presented are believed to be from reliable sources and no representations can be made as to its accuracy. All ideas and information should be discussed in detail with one of our qualified representatives prior to implementation. We are not affiliated with or endorsed by the Social Security Administration, the Federal Medicare Program, or any other government agency. Calling this number will direct you to a licensed sales agent.